Now we'll use derivation operators to define formal concepts. A formal concept is specified as a pair AB, where A is a set of objects, B is a set of attributes, A prime equals B, and B prime equals A. In other words, B is precisely the set of all attributes shared by all objects from A, and A is precisely the set of all objects that have all attributes from B. A is called the concept extent, and B is called the concept intent. These are two ways to specify a formal concept. Either we simply list all the objects that it covers, that is, all the objects from its extent A, or we state which attributes an object must have to be considered an instance of this concept. Such attributes form the concept intent B. Let's look at examples. In our context of triangles, the second and the seventh triangles constitute the extent of the concept of right-angle triangles, which has only one attribute E in its intent. Indeed, E is the only property shared by these triangles, and no other triangle has this property. Another concept we may notice in this context is that of isosceles triangles with four objects in its extent. By focusing only on acute angled among them, we'll get a more specific concept of acute angled triangles. It has two objects, T4 and T6, in its extent, and two attributes, B and C, in its intent. If you look at the intersection of the corresponding rows and columns, you'll see that the four cells in this intersection have crosses in them. And it is not possible to add any row or any column so that again all cells at the intersection had crosses. This is true about all formal concepts. Up to permutation of rows and columns, every formal concept defines a maximal rectangle filled with crosses. And every such maximal rectangle corresponds to a formal concept. 